grab a magazine. There are handouts on the left side uh, over where the city clerk sits. One is from last week, one's from this week. You will get additional ones as we go through the evening. And if anybody has questions, ask now. We're almost to class time. Okay, everybody ready? <laughs> as ready as we're gonna be? All right, all those out in TV land, stand by. Good evening, and welcome to session two of Citizen Leadership Institute 2023. We're really glad you could be with us. I'm hoping everybody stays defrosted. Um, uh, we uh, all are Arizonans now here. That means anything under 70 degrees is cold. I've lived all my life in Arizona. I grew up in Tucson, so I can't take this. Sorry. No, not going to happen. 40? No. I'm staying in. Um, uh, for our second session, we will be uh, talking to, th we'll be hearing uh, from three different areas of the city. Um, I always forget to do um, uh, basics. Don't forget bathrooms um, right out this door on this side. Um, you should all have signed in, gotten a magazine, and then gotten two um, um, sets of handouts, one from our presentation on the first night, and then a second one of the one that you're about to hear uh, shortly. I also have two more for the next two presentations coming up uh, later this evening. Um, uh, don't forget that you um, should have received an invitation, a special invitation to the State of the City uh, presentation, which is a week from tonight, next Wednesday night, February 1st, at 6.30 at the Apache Junction uh, Performing Arts Center, which is actually on the campus. It's actually the auditorium of the high school. The high school is at the corner of Ironwood and Southern. Um, and so please, if you're at all uh, able, please join us. Uh, it's, it should be a very interesting night, and we get to introduce 
um, uh, some newbies. We have new new faces as, as if, uh, you haven't seen. Don't forget that um, uh, you do need to try to uh, attend at least one city council meeting and one uh, planning and zoning meeting. The planning and zoning commission has not met this year, so uh, that has not come up. As soon as I know their schedule, I will pass it along to you. Remember, the council meets on the first and third Mondays and Tuesdays of every month. The Monday meetings are usually ones that get canceled because they're work sessions, they're just discussion uh, item nights. Um, the regular meetings are on Tuesday, so uh, I would shoot for a Tuesday, either the first or third Tuesday uh, of the month, and of course the next one will be on February the 7th. Um, seven o'clock in this room. Um, the, the second meeting of the month, the third uh, Tuesday of the month, there is also a water board meeting at six o'clock. Um, uh, the city council also acts as the board of directors for the water department, which you will hear about when we get to utilities later in the class. All right, questions up to that point. Everybody uh, up, to, up to speed? Any announcements? Anybody has uh, um, uh, been elected dog catcher of Pinal County or anything like that that we need to know about? New jobs, nothing? All right, in that case, we will get started. Uh, later this evening, you're going to hear uh, a little bit about revenue development, which is something that a lot of people do not realize is part of a number of municipalities and um, uh, other governmental entities, sort of a nonprofit arm, if you will, in a loose way, but you'll get uh, a, a full uh, description of that. Um, uh, the second presentation this evening is a very, very critical one for the city of Apache Junction, and that's uh, economic development, something that everyone sort of has an idea about, but you're going to learn what it really is. And economic development, very, very important for the city of the Apache Junction, because why? Anyone? Ah, uh, you have to pay the bills. You know, economic development is very important because the city depends on sales tax. The city of Apache Junction does not have a property tax. Everybody who lives here pay, pays one. But it goes to the county, it goes to the school district. It does not go, any of it goes to the city. The city, there you go. See, we're going to hear about that in just a second. Um, so economic development, very important. But before we get to that, we get to hear about finance, budget. Very, very critical part, obviously, of any municipality. And we're real lucky because our finance director um, has a lot of experience. Um, she has been in finance in state and local governments for 20 years. Um, she started when she was 14, don't worry. Um, uh, she was in Scottsdale for a number of years. She also has been uh, in various uh, positions at Arizona State University and the Arizona State Retirement System. Something very important to me because I just passed Magic 80. How about that? Um, she uh, has a master's degree in public administration, bachelor's in economics, certified public accountant, a certified government uh, financial manager, and we're very lucky for the last two years, she's been here now just a little over two years, correct? Um, she's been our finance director. She's going to tell you all about the money problems of the city. And it's not really a problem because she's in charge. So the finance director for the city of Apache Junction, Ms. Leslie Duresh. I feel like a rock star. Um, so... I do have a presentation for you tonight, and a lot of people probably don't get too excited about budget. I personally don't get too excited about my own budget, but I do like working on the city budget. Um, there's a reason why they put economic development after me, because it's a little bit more flashy and exciting. So just bear with me through this. I'm just going to take you through um, this presentation, and if you have any questions during the presentation, I'd like it to be very conversational. Feel free to raise your hand, ask questions, or just you know pop in whenever you feel like it. Um, and he, he did get a, give a good introduction. I've been here two years. I've worked in uh, government f since I graduated from college. It's pretty much all I know, and I love it. So that's why I'm here. Um, there we go. Um, so that kind of covers me. I've lived in Arizona as long as I lived in Seattle, where I was born and raised. So uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but it's been a long time. I feel like a native here now. Um, and. So since we're going to be talking about budget, I just wanted to ask you guys, do you guys all budget at home? Can I see a show of hands? 
Yeah, is it could be something really informal or it could be something that's a little bit more formal. But I think we all do it, whether we realize it or not. We're all kind of running those numbers in our head every day. We have to make it really formal because we're spending taxpayer money and we have to be accountable to the taxpayers and to the state and to a lot of other people as well. Um, so if you were to define a budget, what would you, how would you define any volunteers on how you would define a budget? Yeah. Income and expenses, right. You want to see where you're at. It's just an accounting. And what's the goal of doing the budget? Right, not to get into debt or to make sure you can cover all of your expenses. And how many people love budgeting? <laughs> all right. I love it when there's one or two people who are really into it. <laughs> and um, just out of curiosity, are you guys, does anybody do any kind of formal budgeting, use any software or anything like that? Do you, do you have a business by chance? No. No, just for your personal? Oh, okay, great, yeah. So it's not, it's like one of those things when I was in college, economics was not the popular field. Um, I think budgeting is kind of the same way. Some people love it, but most people would rather not have to deal with it. Um, but state law requires a city that we have a balanced budget, and we are required to submit that to the state every year. Um, and we are also required to allow public input. So we are just starting off our budget um, season right now. We are doing our strategic planning. Departments are getting their numbers together to see what they want for fiscal year 24. It is six months away, and we're already starting on it. It's a very long process. We have to go through each of the departments, then it goes through a budget committee, then it goes to city managers, then it goes to council, then we have two public hearings. So it's a really long process. And so by the time we, and it is a budget, it's an estimate. By the time we get to actually you know, having an adopted budget, things could change, but um, it is a, it's a long process. Um, so some of the things that we do to do this, we meet with the council, we have a strategic retreat, and um, they kind of talk about their goals and what they see oh, for the vision of the city and what they've heard from the constituents. And we kind of take that into consideration as we're prioritizing how much budget we have. Um, and then um, things that go into the budget that we have to consider are the economy, right? So, and I think, uh, it's been a whole year since I've done this presentation. So, but um, I, like you said, we don't have property taxes. We only have a sales tax. We have a few charges and fees, but sales tax make about half of our budget. And the other half comes from state shared revenue. And we'll talk a little bit about that more. So those are our two inputs and we have to kind of strategically determine how we're going to um, spend that money. So we're not, we're a very lean community and we have historically been a very lean community. Um, so we have to have a police department. It's required as a city, but other areas that we um, have because citizens want them are the parks and rec, the library, the streets, the courthouse. So um, not every city has the same services and um, some cities have a fire district. Some people have, um, some cities have a, a sewer district or sewer utility in them. We don't. As a city, those are private districts and they're run separately from us. The water district is technically a separate entity, but it is um, run by the same board uh, as the city. So it's pr a component unit. So we consider it part of the city. Um, so this is our vision and our mission. Um, I think we're in a growth period right now. You know, we've just annexed the four square miles downtown, I think, or down south, and things will change in the way it looks. But I think um, we want to keep a good small community feel. Um, but I'm sure a city manager talked about that. I'm sure Pat is going to talk about that as well. But these are our vision, vision and mission for the city. Um, so it's January. We've developed our budget calendar. We took our, we do what's called incremental budgeting. So we took what we had last year. We rolled it over, just copied exactly what it is. And each department has to go through every line item and say, do I still need this? Do I need more or what? And they have to make changes to it. And they have to put in a justification and a description for it before it goes to a budget um, committee. 
Um, so in February, which is next month, we'll start doing our revenue forecasting. Our revenue forecasting, sales tax, we can kind of forecast on our own, but the state share, shared taxes and income and uh, vehicle and um, sales tax, we get those forecast from the state themselves. So we actually have to wait for them to give us those uh, predictions. And then we build it in the budget. Um, and then in March, we send our tentative budget, our preliminary budget to the city manager for review and recommendations. And then in April, the mayor and council will see it and we start having our public work sessions and I, I really encourage anybody to come to those. Um, and because that's when you can have a say on what you want in the budget. And of course, you can always reach out to your council members anytime and let them know what's important to you. And I highly encourage that as well. And then in June, we have final budget adoption and that allows us, because until that's adopted, we can't spend any money. So we do it in June so that July 1, we can have that budget in place to start spending money. Okay. So any questions on the calendar or how that works? Um, so we do a public hearing with, for the tentative budget, and that's required. And sometimes we will have changes between tentative and final. I'm, I've only been here two years, but it's my understanding that we've never actually changed the dollar amount. We might have just shuffled amongst the departments a little bit, but generally speaking, there aren't many changes from the time uh, the tentative goes forward. It hasn't happened yet, that's not to say it couldn't happen. It's probably more likely to change if you get those ideas in earlier, okay? Um, because by that time, we, we only have a certain amount of time before, um, like a month, before uh, tentative and final adoption. And I think pretty much everybody's already seen everything and it's uh, kind of gone through. Um, we don't, if we have big initiatives, I think the public pretty much knows about them, okay? Um, and so if you're hit, hitting the uh, council sessions or watching them on TV, then you should probably already know about some of those things. But if you have a, a something, then I, I do encourage you to, to make those known to your council members because they're really the ones who drive the vision for the city on your behalf. Um, so. I just wanna talk about our funds and I'm really gonna focus on general fund tonight because that's the fund where we spend um, the sales tax and the state shared revenue. But we have a few other funds that come into the city that we manage, um, but we have, a l they're restricted. We can only use them for certain things. So the HERF is the Highway User Revenue Fund and we get that from the state and it comes from gas tax. And we can only use that for streets and, and um, street projects. And then we also have a lot of grants, um, a lot of small ones, a few big ones, and we can only use those for what um, the grant says we can use it for. So we don't have any control over how that money is spent, so we keep it in a separate fund and we track it separately. And then we have a few other uh, special revenue funds, and they're all just restricted. That's restricted money. So I'm not really gonna focus on those too much tonight. I'm just gonna focus on the general fund because that's really where um, you guys have more of a voice in what can happen for the city. Okay, so uh, again, the city, we have three major sources for the general fund. And the city sales tax, it's now 2.4%. Um, of that, 2% is just a base. And then we, um, through council action, approved a 0.2 to cover streets and a 0.2 to cover the public safety retirement system cost. And those are set to expire in a couple years. Um, and so those will go back up to council either for a revote or some, something else. But I'm, say, I'm thinking they're generating over $5 million a year right now, those two uh, pieces. And then we have the state shared uh, sales tax and the state revenue sharing. So one is income tax, and that's two years in arrear. And we don't have any control over that. It's just whatever the income tax is, we get a portion of it, and that's based on our population. And our population numbers are relative to everybody else's population. So if they're growing, they're getting a bigger piece of the pie. Our numbers actually went down slightly. So we get even smaller piece of the pie, and we don't have any control over that. Um, and again, we don't have any property tax. People who live here have property tax. The city doesn't see any of it. 
So it's going to school district, fire district, all, all the other places, but not to the city. Um, okay, and I think I already covered this. <laughs> I just kind of jumped ahead. But this is, this is, the sales tax is half of our city revenue. Um, and right now, there's a couple things that are hitting legislation, I think. Um, that are going to go through the process. Nothing. Um, uh, they're talking about reducing or uh, removing the residential rental tax and uh, food tax. So um, if those go through, that's going to affect us a lot because that's all of our revenue. I mean, that's a big part of our revenue. So we're monitoring that very closely because if that happens, then we have to be prepared for alternative scenarios. Um, and this is just a graphic that shows where our taxes, and you can see the intergovernmental revenues are approximately half and sales tax are approximately half. Um, and then this is our sales tax over the years. Everything's actual here except for 2023, which was our, at the time, what we budgeted. We budget very conservative and we hope it's better. <laughs> so um, yeah, we, it, and our sales tax has been increasing now. Even when COVID hit, we were really concerned. We thought our sales tax would go down, but we didn't really see that kind of a decrease. And I think that's because of the online sales tax. Um, people were still spending. They were just spending it on different things. So we didn't get to hit very, very much with the sales tax for COVID. And here's our state shared revenue. It's a little bit more volatile because again, this is based on things that we don't control. It's based on our population. It's based on everybody else's population. It, it's based on what the state collects in sales tax and what they collect in income tax. So we don't really have a lot of control over that. And this is the same thing. We don't have a lot, of, that one actually went up, but we don't have a lot of control over that. Um, so essential city services that we pay for with the general fund is police, parks and rec, library, public works, all the streets, street lights, uh, drainage, ditches, all that kind of stuff. The court development services where they're going out and inspecting buildings and businesses and making sure everything's up to code. And then there's a lot of other little services like finance and uh, marketing and animal control and the GIS, which you'll start to see more GIS activity, I believe, city attorney. Um, and the city clerk. So all of those are kind of lumped together as kind of uh, management service or management type services. And here's a breakout of how much we spend in each of those areas. So you can see our biggest expenditure is police, right? Um, it costs a lot to run a police department. They need a lot of specialized equipment. They have specialized training. Um, they have their own retirement system, you know, so, and, and it's just really our biggest service that we provide. Um, parks and Rec is the next biggest service. We try to provide excellent Parks and Rec. Lick, Liz is going to come up and talk to you and she'll tell you all about it and it's fabulous. Same with the library. Um, so um, everything else is, is kind of broken up in smaller chunks, but the big one is definitely police and you want to keep that in mind when you're thinking about um, where we're spending our money. So just where we are right now, um, it, we have inflation. Everybody's feeling the inflation. If you go to the grocery store, you feel it. If you go to the gas station, you feel it. We feel that too. Um, we're trying to buy things to do the streets or provide equipment for the police and everything has gone up in price. So we're experiencing that. Although I've heard and um, different opinions, but the supply chain is supposed to be easing up and the inflation is supposed to be easing up. I haven't seen it that much yet. And maybe it's just a little bit lagging. There's also a lot of wage pressure in the market right now. So when we want to go to hire employees or fill positions doing for, because of transition, we're having a harder time hiring employees because uh, they want higher wages and other cities are offering higher wages. So that's something we always have to keep in mind in our budget as well. Um, and interest rates have increased, which uh, you guys are probably all aware of. <laughs> Forecasted maybe to level off, stop increasing so much, maybe even in the next year come down. That's my hope, but we'll see. Um, 
there's some websites here if you want to go on now um, we also have um, I do budget but I also do the annual financial report that's out on the website along with all the budget reports we post the tentative the final adopted on the website there's also copies in the city clerks upstairs and in the library um, so if you ever want that information it's available to you um, and then just some other websites that are or maybe interesting to you. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much all I have. So just open up to any kind of questions you have about the budget cycle or anything that's going on this year, or if you have any questions. I just noticed um, under your city sales tax, that this year, it there seems to be quite a drop over last year. If you're looking, is at there a reason for that? Are you looking at the very last column? Yes. Okay, that's the budgeted the amount. The projected. Yeah. So um, at the time uh, we projected that, we didn't have a full picture because we're always projecting almost a year in advance. Um, and so at the time, we were just basing it on the information we had, and we're very conservative. You know, we don't want to, uh, we w because what we budget for revenues, we feel we can spend. <laughs> so we're pretty conservative about it. Our ta sales taxes have been very good this year, much higher than what we had originally anticipated. Um, will it stay that way? We hope so. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I just have a question regarding the HERF, I think you called it. Yes, HERF. So the expansion of the 24, mm -hmm. is that a Pinal County um, expansion that is, I guess, out of budget? Or is that something that Apache Junction would be helping with through that HERF? No, that is completely outside of the city. We are not doing that. We love it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a state project. Yeah. So yeah, uh, State Route 24. Um, uh, is a is a state um, uh, ADOT project. The further extension of the 24, however, would have to be done a different way because it's not that would have been uh, uh, a project under Pinal County. That tax course did not pass in November, so that means if we were to try to do anything else, North South Corridor that we've talked about before, anything else, we'll, we would have to, you know, in, in this case, like 24 would have to be with Queen Creek since we're, that's the borderline between Apache Junction and Queen Creek, so that would happen. That's a good question, though. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, so sorry if you already touched on this because I came in just a little bit late. Can you talk a little bit about like how much the city allocates for like a rainy day fund and mm -hmm. uh, how much we like currently have sitting in there and um, how that kind of fluctuates, especially with like economic depression and development. Right. So we have, um, I wouldn't call it a rainy day fund, but we do have a fund balance, um, which is basically anything that exceeded our expenditures. So it's, it's a balance that we carry. Um, we always budget a certain amount to cover um, grant matching. Um, emergency services, a couple capital projects, because you can't forecast everything. So we do build a little bit of cushion in there, but most of it will just stay in the fund balance. We try and reserve that for um, emergencies or other things. Um, we just issued a bond, and so we keep a reserve balance to cover the bond as well. Um, but uh, I think it was, I wanna say it was 13.5 the prior year. We'll be uh, announcing the new uh, uh, financial report. On, it will be presented to council on the next council meeting. So I invite you guys to come watch that one. Um, but our fund balance is getting healthier. But again, uh, because uh, the economy always has its ebbs and flows, so you just don't want to tie up all of that money. So we need to have a, a certain amount of fund balance. Plus, it helps with our bond rating and our ability to um, get credit to have a, a good, secure fund balance. Well, and I would suspect with the, um, I guess, the possibility of the sales tax for food going away, yeah. that that would be a cushion we would like to have as a city. 
Right, but that would be a, a again, that's a temporary fix. Uh, the fund balance would more be for like the one-time expenditures. So in order to keep ongoing programs going, like recreation or police services at the level that we are now, we would um, pretty much need to uh, keep our revenues at the level they are now. Although we are increasing our fund balance a little bit, so we could uh, pull back a, a little bit. Um, but uh, generally speaking, uh, it's not an ongoing source. Fund balance is a one time, so. So you can see that's a balance that has to happen. Yeah. You know, certainly we understand, you know, the, the idea of trying to give everybody a break and not, you know, tax food, but that also, you know, affects the other side of the equation. So something to think about. These are the tough questions that this council and, and our leadership has to, has to address. Yeah. Okay, more questions? AA, with both Fitch and Moody's. The question was, what's our bond rating? It's double A. Just one more quick question. Um, do we have a buy-in at Apache Junction campaign? Buy-in at Apache Junction campaign. I don't know that, oh, yes, that oh. there are um, lot of people who maybe don't realize. I know we had a, a good effort for Shop Local, and I think Pat is going to be talking about that in his presentation, so I'm going to defer to that. Um, there is also something called a buy-in for bonds, so that you could buy into bonds issued by the city, but we don't have any of, of that. We only issued the one, and that was for uh, pension. So. so if I see any of you on Signal Butte, you know what's going to happen. Big trouble. Right, Patrick? All right, okay. other questions? Does everybody now know they can go home and uh, do their own budget? Have a good fund, you have a $13.5 million fund balance? Savings account, no? Okay, any, any more questions? No, okay. Leslie Duresh, thank you. Everybody's okay, right? Then let's continue. There's your oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, as Leslie mentioned, and as uh, you can see, going right along with finance, economic development, again, very, very critical. And we're very lucky because uh, we have a new economic development director. He's just been here since September, correct? Um, but comes to us from the city of Chicago. He actually worked in the suburbs of Chicago for the last 10 years in various capacities with different villages and towns in the suburbs of Chicago. So has a lot of really, really cool municipal economic development experience. Um, similar and different to what we face here in Arizona, but certainly um, uh, being a suburban city that Apache Junction is, and, and Apache Junction is a suburb, no matter how you look at it. It may have been its own city for the longest time, but it does still act like a suburb because it is still tied to a metropolitan area. So um, uh, um, our new economic development director comes to us with a lot of really good experience. He uh, went to school at Ball State University in Indiana. Home of David Letterman. Home of David Letterman, that's right. Cardinals? Yeah. Oh, man, I hope I got that one right. Jeez. Um, bachelor's in Urban and Regional Planning from the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, Shambana, as they call it there. Um, the fighting on line eye. And uh, like I said, he actually comes from, uh, most recently from the town, is a town or village of Wheeling? Wheeling the village of Wheeling, which has 39,000 people in it. How many people in the city of Apache Junction? Do you remember? About 42,000, so pretty close, huh? That makes sense. Um, like I said, he has hit the ground running. He's got a whole bunch of things he's going to tell you about uh, that he's been working on, and uh, he's just been here for four months, and he's off and running already. So our new economic development director, Patrick Ainsworth. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Can you guys hear me okay? Could ask them in YouTube land. Can they hear me okay? 
All right, well, thank you for that. Um, you know, one thing that um, Al may either not know or didn't mention, um, I actually come from a large uh, customer service background. So retail, restaurant, hospitality. Um, at one point I was doing 3,000 dishes in a shift to, during college, so don't ask me to do that again. Um, so a lot of people are always gonna ask, what is economic development? It's a multifaceted question, and that, coincidentally, I. Um, as I kind of say in, internally, I'm the new Janine. I actually watched uh, my replacements, uh, or my predecessor's last two presentations, and yeah, she's absolutely right. My interpretation of, of economic development is slightly different than hers. Nothing wrong with either interpretation, but um, being as it is, we are a burgeoning community. We are we're very rural-esque, but we see a lot of potential growth in the South. You're gonna see some of that hopeful new ideas to match that new um, economy that we're gonna see on the south side of 60. Um, let's see here. So uh, in the theme and, and spirit of uh, my predecessor, I, I do agree there's about five main components to economic development. Um, there are a lot more things that we do behind the scenes that you guys don't have to hear because I'll probably put you to sleep and I don't wanna do that. Um, but the five things that um, I'm gonna to highlight today are recruiting businesses, assisting existing businesses, highlighting um, Patchy Junction for new investment and reinvestment, marketing our community, and utilizing relationships to strengthen AJ. Who knew tonight that was academic development was a team sport? Come on, raise your hand, anybody? <laughs> All right, thank you. Because honest to gosh, you guys are probably um, just as knowledgeable about the Apache Junction community as the staff here. And I, I want to, we are gonna put some new tools in place very soon, hopefully as soon as next week, to give um, everybody a leg up to, to be part of academic development. So the number one thing everyone always says, when are we gonna get a new Red Lobster or a Chili's or something? Well, we'll get there hopefully some point in the future. But um, the biggest component of, of, um, of being here is to bring in something new. And, uh, but don't get me wrong, it's equally as important to maintain existing and sustain existing businesses and help them grow um, and give them those tools and resources, empower them to stay here, grow and prosper even more. But to focus on uh, economic development, uh, you know, it's not just one person that's going to recruit. Um, I work with a lot of brokers, a lot of the property owners, a lot of the actual business decision makers. If they are going to look in the East Valley, you know, I'm, I'm that cheerleader to give them the pitch for Apache Junction. Um, we have a lot of state-owned land, a lot of BLM land. We, we're one of the rare communities in Pinal County that actually has a, a freeway going through it with five exits, US 60. Um, with that Prop 469 mop passing, we are kind of looking at that as an asset. And, and I know that may um, say, well, it, it kind of veers from four to two lanes, but we have a highway going through our community. I would have killed to have five exits um, in my last community. Um, but it, so my point is we, we try to frame that, um, that message and send that off to all these decision makers to help bring in new jobs, help fill some vacancies, and bring in some uh, new opportunities. So when we hear retail, don't think just Apache Junction, think regional. So as I have always said, we are um, kind of the epicenter of the Far East Valley. So who, kind of that, who counts towards that, that regional retail component or perspective? Gold Canyon, uh, East Mesa, unincorporated Apache Junction, the winter residents, and of course the core residents, the full-time residents uh, of Apache Junction. Shockingly, if you count the uh, winter residents for that six month time period, we're about 130,000. That's a really good size for, for Gold Canyon. Um, and, uh, and just so you know, actually my predecessor Janine had, um, thank you Janine for doing this, she had hired retail strategies to kind of do a regional perspective approach. So she was trying to show retailers like, hey, you know, we've got a Walmart, we've got a Ford, we got a Starbucks, a Dutch Brothers, I love that place. Um, and our goal is to say, hey, we've got some great bones and great assets. Don't just look within our boundaries, but look a little bit beyond because um, Gold Canyon doesn't have the Walmart. They have to come to our Walmart or the other one, but let's just focus on ours, right? Um, or the Dutch Brothers. So um, we have some strong assets and we, by golly, we really wanna do that. Um, uh, and we wanna highlight that in a graphical manner. And this is one of those tools. So someone actually mentioned about buy in um, Apache Junction. 
So I'm a little bit ahead of the game, but um, yes, buy an Apache Junction. Why? That We talked about that sales tax. So um, you all have that power to help bring amazing services to the city with new books in the library, new parks. I mean, we have one dog park that is, I was to die for. If you guys haven't been there, I don't have a dog yet, but I will definitely go when I have a dog and register uh, properly and, and get it to enjoy rolling, the, uh, following the balls. Good job, Parks and Rec. So, um, this is just one of those tools. This is done by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, there's a lot of businesses in here, and the biggest one, which we'll go over in a little bit as well, is called the visitaj.com. Uh, so it's our travel and visitor bureau um, uh, website. So again, we'll go over that a little bit, but uh, it is retail is a big component. Um, and of course, most people say, what defines your town? Well, it's where you eat and where you shop, right? So we have a lot of mom and pops and a lot of great um, national chains that coexist really well. So we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later as well. Okay, so uh, um, Leslie had kind of briefly mentioned about uh, GIS. So if you guys didn't know, we have three GIS technicians here. What is G GIS? Geographic Information System. So, well, as one of my jokes goes, economic development, urban planning, what do we do for a living? We stare at maps. But I try to make maps really fun. So. Imagine knowing you're driving down the street, you see the Village Inn restaurant closed. It's like, oh, bummer, what happened? It closed two years ago, pandemic didn't really help their business. So my job is to try and help find a new restaurant, new retailer, someone to kind of bring in some cool new uh, hip opportunity there. That's where you all come in. So we have just launched this month the new Property Finder map. Um, it takes uh, information from a, a, a database called CoStar. It's, think Redfin for commercial properties. And there's a lot of local property owners who don't have their properties marketed. So we have created a brand new database that brings in the local property owner information and the national broker uh, database into one free, easy to use website. So if you bear with me 30 seconds, I'm gonna get off this and show you how it's working. So if you go to our main page, there's our lovely Superstition Mountain hiking trail. Um, go to business, and just so you know, this site is under construction, so you'll see a lot more cool things here in the near future. You go to the property finder map. So again, patchyjunctionaz.gov, click on property finder map, and it will bring you to a landing page of three components, commercial and office, so industrial, commercial and office, restaurant, retail space, and development opportunities. So what does that mean, Pat? So we have a fairly good sized city, 43 square miles. Uh, we actually have a relatively low vacancy rate, which means uh, over 93% of, I think, of all of our commercial and, and industrial spaces filled, which is really good. Um, that's going to fluctuate over time, especially if we get a new employment center, a new business park, you know, some on space may have be vacant for a little bit, et cetera. But right now, this is kind of a snapshot of what's available, right? So if Village Inn uh, Restaurant went under, um, uh, or they decided to cease operations there, we get a marketing brochure from uh, the local broker, or I'll actively be calling a commercial property owner and say, hey, I noticed your space is, is dark, it's vacant, how can we help you trying to reactivate it? So when we um, get that information, we will post this online for free because we have staff here that is just taking about 10 minutes of staff time to po put this on this map. And you click once, you click twice, and you get the entire marketing brochure for this one. So this is what we call a CoStar report. It kind of shows what the demographics are of the area, um, how long has it been vacant, uh, and the best part is, here's a couple maps, there's the contact information. That's the person that you would call and say, hey, I would love to see this restaurant. Maybe your neighbor wants to open up a pizza place and we've been dying to have a, bre a pizza brewery com combination and this might be a semi-turnkey operation, which means that they wouldn't have to do too much work to turn it into a pizzeria, brew pub, et cetera. So our job is to bring this kind of information to the fingertips, to everybody, as easy as possible. Even so easy, my dad can use it. Sorry, dad. Um, so uh, now you'll also see some uh, national ones, um, and now this there is um, some perks about this website and some ones that you know can use uh, some tune-up. Like if someone's looking for a 900 square foot spot for a cookie bakery or a candy shop, it's not as filterable. So we're gonna keep trying to enhance this thing. But my goal is to keep this as easy as possible. But if you're having a tough time, just call Pat. I'll help you out. Um, and, and again, just to go back, this is the, um, one of those brochures that we were talking about um, 
Uh, and I will tell you the only thing that we won't do with this website, if I'm a commercial megapolis company and I'm going to sell a whole portfolio, like 50 properties, and, and one of those little Apache, or one of those buildings is in Apache Junction, that's what they call investment sale. We're not going to do that. that. That's not worth our time, and that's more higher institutional sell. That Our goal is to bring in new awesome businesses, and this is one of those main tools. Any questions on this map? Yes. So not for a while, because correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes these things are a year in the rear. Uh, it takes four or five months to, oh yeah, and the question for on YouTube is if we bring in new businesses, will it help our budget? Uh, the answer is generally yes, if it's sales tax producing, food and beverage tax producing, or a sales office or e-commerce, because when we collect a tax on a good sold, that portion comes to the city eventually. But you gotta also realize it will take time to do a lease, it'll take time to build it out, it'll take some time to stock it and then open your doors, right? So um, I'll just simply say economic development, there's no such thing as an instantaneous decision and, and gratification. It, things I've been working on five years ago in Chicagoland area are now just taking fruition. So it's, it's sometimes fast, sometimes really slow. But to answer your question, uh, food and beverage, restaurants, bakeries, um, retail stores, yes, that, that will help uh, generally speaking. Okay, any more questions about the map? I am gonna go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. Oh, nuts, sorry. Okay, so uh, just kind of going back to that village and pizza, another one of my taglines, uh, the staff, sorry, you, I, and I know I repeat myself a lot, is less vacancy equals more vibrancy. So uh, again, you're gonna hear me say it time and time again, everybody knows probably somebody who wants to open a business. Give them a call, say, hey, go check out the city of Apache Junction, it's an awesome place, not just the Superstition Mountain, it's got an awesome uh, city, and we're happy to help to figure out where we can find them a spot and get them, get them up and running. Okay, so I talked a lot about recruiting businesses. So existing businesses, if you can be surprised to hear, um, with our business database, we have about a thousand brick and mortar businesses in Apache Junction. That could be everything from a small sales office to Walmart to Fry's, um, and actually, um, uh, no, I'll do that trivia question later. So our goal is to connect the dots between, hey, I may be this existing business, I'm not doing so well, what can I do? Here are free or reduced services that are um, taxpayer paid or uh, provided by the federal government that, that helps uh, those businesses. So one of the key things I'm literally working on this second is, is, is um, uh, Al was talking about, I'm trying to hit the ground running. We're gonna do a business survey to those plus or minus thousand businesses. So uh, we're doing it online and probably through the mail. Think of it like a snapshot on time. What can we do better? What is great? What are our strengths and our weaknesses and our good bones? And I'm gonna ask those business owners, hey, you know, how can we be of service? Um, I am a department of one, so, you know, eventually we'll, um, we'll add a, another person in the future, but um, our goal is to say, you know, as the business liaison to the business community, what can we do better and how do we get there? Um, and then we also connect those businesses to some of these ser services, which I'll touch on in a little bit. Um, okay, trivia question. Where is the local chamber of commerce? Anybody? Anybody who, who is not a staff person. Let somebody else answer. All right. It's off Phelps. All right. Yes. And what's the landmark? I guess what's the landmark business? Is it nearby? All right. There you go. We don't need a mic for this guy. Um, so no, I uh, brownie points for the for the later life. Um, so. We have a great working relationship with our Chamber of Commerce. I literally was just in Marianne's office to give you guys all that wonderful little swag, the Discover Magazine. They were just printed. They have like 12,000 of them because they want to promote the business community. They are our main bread and butter for, we help bring in businesses and get them set up for success. They are the main B2B and B2C, which is business to business and business to community. Uh, liaison. So they're the marketing, the promotional. They work with us on the Lost Dutchman days. Um, and uh, if you guys don't know, they're always looking for volunteers. I'll be there at five in the morning for the parade. So I'll see you there. Um, so, and, and it's our visitor center. So go there. They'll have great um, information on local businesses, things to do. 
if you guys have people coming in from out of town, you better eat, stay, and shop in Apache Junction because that out-of-town money is great. That's new money that, you know, um, that comes here, circulates here, it helps our benefit, our businesses, it leads to uh, more sustained uh, employment, et cetera. So I know I need to keep going. So some of our other um, business resources, they are all government, nonprofit, or, um, uh, uh, no, government or nonprofit or volunteer. So SCORE, um, I worked a lot with uh, the company or the pro uh, nonprofit organization called SCORE Chicago. Here I think it's just called SCORE Arizona. These are retired or part-time CEOs or decision makers who are mentoring businesses uh, who are just starting off or having some struggles. So that, um, they're a huge asset. Uh, the Minority Business Development Agency, they're in Phoenix, they're at the uh, Better Business Bureau office. They offer some services I have never even seen in Illinois. So we have some great resources here. Um, and then trivia question time. True or false? Do we have a SBDC office in Apache Junction? Dad, just blur it out. <laughs> Boy, you're on fire. Yeah, so I've worked in several communities, and I'll tell you what, for the entire Pinal County, which is a, the same square mileage as the state of Connecticut, we only have two SBDC uh, staff people who serve the entire county, and one of them is right down the street. My jaw dropped when I found that out. It's a mile away, I can walk there. So what do they do? They, are, they work with the US SBA, the Small Business Administration, and these are the direct boots on the ground staff who help our local business community. These are free or reduced cost services from business plan making to HR to marketing. Um, Paul is the local liaison over there. He is everything extraordinaire. Um, I've met with him a couple times, got his contact. If you guys ever know anybody who is in need of assistance to open a business or sustain their business, he can be of assistance. Now, they don't do the work for the business owner, right? They are the ones to kind of help talk about resources and, and, and get them kind of propped up uh, here and there. Um, so, again, it's... While we are here to help our businesses, we can't do the work for them. There's a liability issue. There's a you know expertise issue. So we are trying to be that connected dots person. Okay, so highlighting AJ for reinvestment and investment. So as you guys know, we have some um, new properties in town, new projects in town, some tired properties that probably have seen a better day, right? Um, this is probably one of our newest projects uh, that my predecessor did a great job of working on. It was the old... Uh, West Marketplace. So these are the before and afters. If you look on the left, that's one of the structures. Now you have one of the modern shopping center. On the left is the former um, uh, plot, of land, plot of land that is now a 28-acre shopping center. And uh, another true or false, our fries that's featured here is one of the top 10 operating uh, fries in the state of Arizona. True or false? Not you this time. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys shop there. Thank you. I've actually never seen a grocery store with a furniture and and uh, and uh, clothing company, but you know what? It serves a purpose. I love it, and it's got a wine bar. Yeah, so um, you guys should be really proud because a lot of people come to that fries, which is a sense of pride. Yes, it's busy. Yes, it takes a few extra mix, minutes to park. I love it. I get my extra fifty steps in, but um, you know, it, those are the sort of assets that we tell developers and brokers and, and folks like, hey, we've got some great assets, we've got great demographics, um, and again, it's in a regional sense, right? Not everybody in Apache Junction shops in Apache Junction. So that's probably the closest fries to unincorporated Apache Junction, Gold Canyon, and uh, maybe East Mesa. So keep it up. Let's keep it at the top 10. Okay, so marketing the community. All right, so Matt is behind the scenes, Matthew McNulty. I'm going to put him on the spot here. He designed this little uh, uh, swag, swag bag. Um, this isn't even the most up-to-date one. I couldn't find a photo. Sorry, Matt. Um, but we have an in-house marketing firm, uh, marketing team, and Al's part of that team, so thank you. Keep up the great work, Al and Matt. Um, so we, like um, that person in the back asked, we do have a buy local campaign. Um, we are going to do some more activities um, through that will be featured on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. Um, if you don't have one, get one. Um, I'll tell you where to buy one here in Apache Junction. But um, our goal is to bring all this information to your fingertips. And um, so again, some irons in the fire, some things going on. You can pick up swag bags at the visitor center, which is located where? Yes, we're getting 2,500 more in. Thank you, Al, for ordering those. Um, they, we just dropped off another 50, so. Boy, you know some. Oh, man, all right. Well, I won't take any more, I promise. Um, 
So the other things that we do, we have uh, some online prints, some social media presence, print, print items as well. So darn it, I left it on my desk. But um, so we actually, through partnerships and regional focused uh, uh, collaboration, we work with other agencies to get the word out about Apache Junction. So you'll see this, this is the Chamber's bread and butter. Um, the one on the left is the Arizona State Travel Guide. I think we're page like 26. I had it in my hands, it's on my desk, sorry. But um, we partner with the Arizona Office of Tourism to actually do a buy-in program. So we're not paying the entire, I think that one was like $1,800 to print about 40,000 magazines, but we're only paying 900 bucks. So great bang for the buck because this is like one of the number one go-to um, uh, print, uh, print uh, publications for those that want something tangible. So we, we do online, we'll, we'll do some um, uh, social media stuff, but a lot of it is, our, is not just the, the print, but our website. So to answer your question in the back, this is on the bottom here is our official Visit AJ page. Uh, Matthew McNulty and my predecessor had completely revamped this last year, so it looks really cool. Give them a round of applause on a nice job on the updates. Um, we are continually updating that. We're actually working, again, with the Arizona State Arizona Office of Tourism on this thing called SEO, Search Engine Optimization. So if you're gonna type in things to do in Apache Junction, this website will hopefully get to the top because you know a lot of companies pay big bucks to get to the top of Google and I, I don't want to do that. I wanna be a good steward of taxpayer dollars. So we're working with a, a firm, again, through that buy-in program at a reduced price to kind of come up with content that is exciting to you guys, exciting to your, your family who comes to visit out of town and, and just boasts uh, the, the, all the great things going in Apache Junction. Okay, so we've talked about this kind of at length, um, but these are the other organizations that I work with on a daily basis. And I literally just saw a couple of these folks from these organizations yesterday. So academic development is a team sport. I'm a department of one. Um, they, we have other cheerleaders that actually work with us and kind of help tout Apache Junction. So the Chamber of Commerce, right up there, Marianne and Heather are doing a great job. The AC, which is the Arizona Commerce Authority, they're the folks who bring in a lot of information um, to national brokers to say, hey, Apache Junction is right there on the, um, uh, the edge of, of Mesa and Tempe, and they've got some great opportunities for new employment. If you guys have seen my predecessor's presentation, she had a factoid that dropped my jaw. 90% of our working population leaves Apache Junction to go to their job. That's a big number, it's a huge percentage. Even if it's, um, I think it was about 14,500 people, it's a lot of people that could be staying here during the day, um, uh, you know, because daytime population is just as important as weekend and resident population. Those folks that are coming to our fast casuals, going to a fries, going to our gas stations, that money during the day helps circulate. And we, we are very fortunate to double our population for the winter residents, but, Having employment here brings um, more vibrancy. And so the ACA is very pivotal to help that. So is the Greater Phoenix Economic Development, uh, Economic Council. So I, I, that program I was telling you about, uh, through our membership, we, I, we get one uh, access or subscription to COSAR. It would be very expensive if we didn't do that with leveraging these relationships. We get that again as a reduced rate, which brings in a lot of knowledge to help us fill those vacancies. The other ones, um, Central Arizona uh, governments, uh, Phoenix East Valley Partnership, Pinal Partnership, these are all economic development related organizations, either nonprofits or governments that are looking out for your benefit to bring you a great quality of life and some other things. Okay, so I can't do economic development in front of people without being a commercial. So if you guys haven't been to Apache Junction restaurant lately, make sure you go, because we are a dub, the unofficial mom and pop restaurant capital of Arizona. If you, and I will admit, I'm eating my way through. I do have Thanksgiving pants once in a while. Um, I haven't eaten all through these items, so I'm always looking for recommendations. Also, you guys should be extremely proud of how great uh, the city looks at the quality of life. Um, I've been here, I have just, I, I, we put together a PowerPoint that's actually, this, this slide is on our website under community. Um, it'll, it'll keep rotating if you go to our, our website page. But we have so many things going on. We have equestrian trails, off-roading bike, uh, off-bike roading, off-road trails. There we go. Uh, 2,200 acres of open space. This is what um, business decision makers also look at. They look at the quality of life for their employees, their visitors. They want to be proud of the communities they, they invest in. And if we had nothing, no library, no, off, uh, no dog park, no nothing, it, it'd just be like, well, why should I invest in here? So we absolutely tout the quality of life that you guys all benefit from. Again, dog park, I'm excited. Um, and then the other aspect, <laughs> I will get a dog. 
Um, uh, quality of life also is education. So we're very fortunate to have one of the five campuses for the Central Arizona uh, College uh, system here, the Superstition Mountain one. I'm sorry, the, yeah, Superstition Mountain campus. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow there's a ribbon cutting for a new electric training system. So if you're going to be an electrician, there's a company out of Tempe, I think it's called Wilco. I don't know if that sounds familiar. Um, they're doing a new training facility right here. They're trying to train the next generation of electricians. So we are very fortunate to have folks like this at the table trying to educate because the, what's the other big component of academic development? A well-trained workforce. I can't tell you how many times I'll send an email, connect the dots with these uh, workforce developers. Um, again, that's not everything you guys see, but if we don't have a well-trained or um, uh, a, a population that's willing to do, you know, go beyond their house and put their Nintendo down or whatever that thing's called these days, you know, we, we wouldn't be where we, where we are today. All right, so make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and sign up for our new e-newsletter. E uh, what's that website, Al? It is uh, gov slash newsletter. Thanks. Oh, so it's not e-newsletter. So yeah, it's just newsletter. So that's the happenings, local city council decisions. We're going to be putting a lot of economic development things on there. Um, I will give you guys a preview. Uh, we will have this thing called a business suggestion box on our website. So this will be a power to the people form. If you guys knew a barbecue, a cookie, baker, somebody who wants to open up some sort of restaurant retail business, it'll, you'll fill out a little bit of information and no, you can't just put down Trader Joe's and hit send. You gotta put down an email and an actual contact name and it'll send me an alert and I will work with that person We'll roll out the red carpet. We'll show them what's great about Apache Junction. So that's coming very soon. And uh, just be on the lookout for that. We'll be posting some things on social media about that one. All right, questions or comments? We're finally here and everyone's awake. How exciting. Come on, I'm going to not sit down until three questions. And I'm not, <laughs> and hell, don't give me three. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not going to ask any of them. So it's up to you. Okay, I can sit down. It's fine. Really? <laughs> okay, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Now I got to think how I want to word it. So, um, how many businesses? I guess we, it's hard to put a number on it, but how many businesses would you look for to open to experience the growth that you're kind of wanting? So, like, what's a metric? Maybe for within all a year or so. I don't yeah. know, something like that. Yeah, it, it, it's really hard to put quantitative metrics on a very unique community. There is only one Apache Junction, right? Um, especially with the view of the superstition, with the amount of growth that we have to the south. Um, and to Leslie's point, it kind of fluctuates with the the economy, and it's unfortunate. As much as we will do everything in our power to prop up businesses, some will retire or they want to sell and they can't find a seller and their lease expires. So there's just a natural attrition to seeing businesses go. So if we get 10 new ones and nine close and they're completely separate, it's a net gain of one. It's kind of hard to, to measure that. But to answer your question, um, my goal is to see these existing spaces backfilled as quickly as possible and as much as possible and, and then, of course, we'll probably see some new commercial on the south as those residential rooftops get added. Are there any new exciting businesses coming that you can tell us? Ooh. Well, if you, there's a boba shop, boba tea shop that just opened. I had nothing to do with that one. It sounds <laughs> like someone's already tried it. It's uh, right next to the Goodwill and the Ross, I think, in that shopping center. Um, obviously, you guys know that Popeye's opened. Um, you know, we, I've only been here three and a half months, so I am certainly trying to put my ear to the ground. We're doing the business survey to see what's, what's available. Um, but there are things we are working on. Um, I don't announce anything until the, the lease is signed and a permit's issued. It's just because what happens if um, a family member ha is sick and they have to, you know, get, go take care of it. Those things happen all the time, unfortunately. Now, everybody remember what's being built on the corner of... Delaware and Apache Trail outside of Walmart. What is it? It's not Walmart Junior. What is it? Patrick, how many questions do you get about that? I actually haven't gotten that question. I because it all got it was all under construction before I got here. Oh, okay. But, um, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure they're going to provide great services to those that that need dental work. 
Um, do, do you still get a lot of calls, and, and your predecessor and I will get these calls too, and you will see them on social media all the time. Do you get a lot of people calling you and say, why don't we have X um, a business, X restaurant, um, X whatever? Not yet, but we will after this. Um, so that's, that's where this business uh, suggestion box is going to come in. So again, this is power to everybody. I, I am not just, I ask for to feel empowered, but be empowered. It's like, talk to your neighbor. If you overheard someone saying they open up on a tea shop, get their freaking information and put it on that website, it'll send me an email because honestly, gosh, I, I, I just, you'll be shocked how one conversation could take place. I will bring up an example. There was one person in two jobs ago who called me and said, hey, I worked at a wine shop uh, in a, wine, a, a fine dining restaurant. I've always had this ambition to open my restaurant. I worked with her for 14 months. She signed the lease. Four months later, the pandemic hit, but she still opened even with the pandemic, and now she's one of the hottest spots in that downtown area. So my point is, like, it's not, it may be no now, but it could be yes in six months or later. So I'm persistent, Pat. I will keep calling, but until they just say, please stop calling. But um, if, it'll start with you guys. You probably know someone who wants to open a restaurant or a retail shop or something right now. And I will and, and we'll be honest, it's, if they don't have any knowledge, let's find them those resources to get them knowledge, to get them some experience, keep it as a long range vision, because the worst thing I want to see is someone open a business and they shut down right away, right? Because they lose out, we lose out, it's another vacancy to deal with. So we, we, we want to try to make sure we do it right when we help them set up for, set up for success, yeah. What are the requirements to get a Costco or Sam's Club near AJ? Yeah. So as you probably know, Queen Creek's getting theirs tomorrow, which um, I guess will alleviate Gilbert's and Mesa. Yay, less lines over there. Um, so I, I, coincidentally, I, I spoke, I had lunch with the Economic Development Director from Queen Creek about two weeks ago, just kind of like an introduction. And uh, she said she was knocking on that door for several years. I mean, Queen Creek has you know, million dollar homes and they're twice our size and, and Santan Valley is even bigger than them and they have very little commercial. So a rat national retailer like that has very um, set parameters of what they're looking for. When will we get one? I hope, I would say, I, if I had my crystal ball within 10 years, but where, when, how, why, the land's gotta be right, the seller's gotta be right, they, they, they still gotta be in expansion mode. And I will be frank, Sam's Club is not expanding. They closed 63 locations. As a matter of fact, my first week on the job in one of my prior communities, that's when they announced 63 closures. And we, they, we had a Sam's Club there, and, and shockingly it didn't close, but the news article almost made it look like it was. I'm like, oh dear. So my first week on the job, I'm calling the national you know, t uh, 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 decision makers. I'm like, are you closing? The answer is no. But you know, it, when, they, when a company is uh, contracting, it takes a long, long time to expand. But there is good news. Walmart, you know, has announced publicly they're expanding. Target's been opening in the in the region. Um, I'll share this real quick. That um, in the last, I think, 12 years, this came from a developer that over a million people have moved to uh, Arizona permanently in those last 10 to 12 years, and very little retail growth has happened. So we are very underserved. So we hope to see not just retail, but restaurants, hospitality, entertainment. But we'll make sure we do it right, right? Because there's obviously the, er the rural area we want to preserve and some exciting things that will happen, but we don't want a, a 10 story hotel building being right next to a single family, you know, out next to a equestrian trail. So we, w and just so you know, I do work with our development services very carefully to make sure that we preserve that lifestyle that a lot of people enjoy here. Way in the back. Oh. I was just curious is there any particular type of business? that makes a healthier city, such as manufacturing, service industries, um, agriculture, um, building, whatever, the different types. Wouldn't you need kind of a, a broad scope of all types of businesses to have a healthy city? And just to de define your healthy, are you talking about a healthy economy or, okay, well, so, what yeah. would be worried um, about if you were a city, right? Yeah, in, in, our, in our field of economic development, we call it a diversified, diversified land use portfolio. Whew, what does that mean? We have a lot of variety of uses where it could be some light manufacturing, some retail, some restaurants where 
we, we diversify our, our revenue as well. So if we have a, a nice hotel that comes in off US 60 to take advantage of all these wonderful points of interest, that could help our hotel, motel, or bed tax. And you know, if there was a slight down economy, like the re e commerce is just kicking butt and, and, and brick and mortar is not doing so great, we can see that, that resilience. So yes, we, our goal is to bring in um, smart, land use decisions, whether that's employment, hospitality, et cetera. But eventually we will get there. Um, the Prop 469, which again, I just got here in October. I learned about it as the vote was taking place. It didn't happen. So um, it's not gonna hinder us to see um, those kind of diversified land use decisions, but it will take a lot longer because the, the, that road system's not coming in right, right, right away. Of percentages on those types for cities, or I would say no. Um, I've been in towns where 80% of their land use was manufacturing, and of course, what happened during the Great Recession? Nearly every industrial business got wiped out. But now it's what they call a white hot market. It's actually cooling off. But industrial with the warehouse distribution has just been done a big boom. We want a diversified. Uh, approach towards uh, office, art, maybe some light R&D, light manufacturing, some um, of those things, that actually does get encapsulated in our zoning code. So you'll see in a business park designation, let's call it Superstition Business Park, you may see 20 buildings and 40 businesses in there and they're not all manufacturing or dis uh, distribution, et cetera. So if something goes out, um, probably something will go in and, and increase that. But yes, to your point, um, not just for a healthy economy for land use uh, for businesses, but we need a, a healthy workforce, a healthy uh, transportation system, and definitely a, a healthy network for fiber optics, electricity, water, et cetera. Um, when you talked earlier just about like how like 90% of people that live in AJ go outside of AJ for work, do we know what industries they're leaving AJ for? We could. Uh, there's a census service that does that. Um, it's a lot of clicks and a lot of cups of coffee to get to that number. But um, my bet it was, would be a lot of manufacturing, a lot of distribution. Um, we are, you know, a working class community, which is nothing to be ashamed of. I came from a very working class community myself and very proud of it. So uh, to answer that, it's probably uh, mostly manufacturing, industrial, and, and contracting work and service, yeah. Actually, it kind of, those two questions kind of answered mine. So I'm new, too, to the area, and we drive around, and we think, okay, what kind of things, you know, businesses would be great here? So you've mentioned a few things as far as even the manufacturing, like restaurants, there is a need for more. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just from people driving around saying, oh, I wish, you know, there was a Whataburger or something. But you would say, from your perspective, there's a need for more restaurants, a need for more of everything? So we have a sensible approach. So obviously, the pandemic impacted nearly every single business. Some did fabulous. But now even we're seeing even the high-tech companies on the downward shift a little bit. Um, so my goal is to, to reactivate those vacant spaces. Let's take the village in restaurant, for example with a new use. Um, and trust me, uh, I've even gone up to food trucks and gave my car, I'm like, I got the perfect spot for you. You don't need more, more wheels, you need more um, plates, uh, serving tables. Um, but it comes with time, and I think with this new business survey, we're even leaving an option to say, um, you know, what would you like to see potentially more of? But don't forget, too, that six months of the year, we don't have a double the population, and I have businesses that struggle. They lay off really good workers. They they don't get here as often. So that's why we, sorry, real quick. So that's why we at staff are coming in with some new tools to kind of bring more customers to those existing businesses. Um, and when they do great, then I know we'll, we'll be in a great position to keep adding more um, sensibly. We have had for many, many years a number of businesses that would just simply close during the summer. Um, that has, I think that number has dwindled. I think we're, we're doing a little bit better. There's a few more. A full-time residence, as we've talked about before, yeah. but that is, you know, definitely part part of the uh, equation. Uh, you keep mentioning uh, Village Inn a few times. Have you uh, the, the Village Inn? Is it owned by the same owner that owns, you know, Ace and That's and all that? Question. Well, find out on our property finder map. Um, yeah, I actually, I don't know, and I'm sorry. That's 
the number one property that's been brought up to my attention since being here is that restaurant. So um, I think it does talk about recorded owner is Gustav Kuhn. So this, this could be, and just, you know, CoStar is not the, the most up-to-date information, so it could be him, it could have been someone else. The reason is because the, the, yeah, the, the, the owner of that, I, I tried to open up a restaurant a few times, and uh, I tried to open up a restaurant a few times right there, and if you ever dealt with the owner of that, that area, you'll know why he doesn't have anybody renting from him. Well, call uh, Jack Stein. He's, the, he's their okay. broker, and um, give me a call. We'll, we'll, um, here, I'll say this loud and clear. We act as a, um, an objective perspective between property owners and business owners. Uh, I can't get in the middle of you know, yeah. prior communications, but we, we certainly try to help provide suggestions to come up with resolutions. Um, but the brokers, so Jack Stein is with um, Patriot Properties. He's the official representative that any person would talk to if they wanted to open up a restaurant. Um, and then sometimes on the tenant side, the restaurant side, you may hire a broker uh, to represent you during those negotiations so you can save the headaches for you know, that, that group of folks. But to that point, you know, I, I, I have not met that property owner. At some point, I'll go on the hello, thank you, sorry to her. Hello, thank you for meeting me. Sorry for taking so much time to chat with you. But um, our goal is to make sure that we have that good rapport with as many people as possible. Yeah. Has there been, any, huh, been any interest in the large hospital conglomerates? I've been up all day. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. Um, are you talking about off of uh, Goldfield? Let's see here. Is that, is that what you're talking about, Goldfield? No. No. What? Well, the, the biggest thing we have is a small banner hospital oh, over on I, uh, Southern. Uh, so any interest Since in hospital? Any yes. interest in hospitals uh, coming out of here? Because we'll need health care. Very good point. And yes, I, I'm happy to say I've reached out to a, a broker who does nothing but medical office and said we are very underserved for medical office. What does that look like? It could be outpatient, it could be urgent care, it could be diagnosis centers. Um, I just learned myself that there was a uh, regional hospital that was planned in this area. Unfortunately, the main developer had passed away. I don't know if it was from COVID or something. But um, we, it was in the works. And, and again, these things take years, unfortunately. Um, it's not my first project that, um, to say that someone has passed away when they were going through like, all the financing and entitlements and the project didn't move forward. And, and, the, and the healthcare industry, of course, has gone through its own you know, evolution over the last several years. Um, uh, you're seeing all those uh, um, mini clinics and uh, drug stores and things like that. It's, it, it has changed the face of, uh, certainly of, you know, primary care in that way. Good stuff, and I think I'm going to Fox's time, so maybe this is the last question. So you mentioned once um, transportation. Who does the public transportation planning? So it's usually our regional transportation authority, and I think we're in two, we're in MAG and Central Arizona? Sort um, of. <laughs> so coincidentally, I'm a, I'm a big geek, I'm a certified urban planner, so usually it's our public works and our planning that work coincide and because there are so many jurisdictions, ADOT, uh, Pinal County, Maricopa County, and our local team, it's usually a collaborative effort. It's not just one person that, that does that. It yeah, is. Oh yeah, it is. absolutely. All right, so. well, um, I will also leave a bunch of cards. Um, I should have just brought my deck, but I've got some, so I will leave them right there, there next you go. to the slide. So feel free to call me, email me, send me smoke signals, whatever. <laughs> and Fox, I know I owe you a big cup of coffee for taking so much time. <laughs> Patrick Gainsworth, ladies and gentlemen. All right, five-minute break for a bathroom break or anything else you need to do, and then our last presentation of the e evening. And here he comes.
certificate of some sort. Um, I, I'm not nearly that um, uh, of a stickler yet, um, but um, we do hope that you can try to take advantage of as many as, as, as we can. And like I said, there are eight sessions if you include uh, next week's uh, uh, State of the City. So there are uh, seven sessions here in the chambers that we hope that you will uh, take part in. And then, of course, the one uh, city council meeting and the one uh, planning and zoning meeting along with the uh, State of the City. Okay, so everybody's uh, ready. If you haven't sent in, make sure you sign in. If you haven't, you should now have four sets of handouts. The presentation from our first night and then the three presentations from tonight. Um, uh, they're all now up here on the ledge. If you have not gotten that, please do so. You should also have a copy of the Discover Magazine, so everybody should have everything. And does everybody remember what the website is for the city? Can we hear it? Please? Ah, it used to be, but it's no longer, so make sure you know the, the new one. ApacheJunctionAZ.gov. That's the new um, uh, a template for um, all government agencies, especially in Arizona. They have gone to that convention, which is cityaz.gov. So mesaaz.gov, tempeaz.gov. Same thing with Apache Junction. Just good to remember because what we try to do is do the website and then the important things like if you've all signed up for the newsletter, if you've all signed up for the newsletter, ApacheJunctionAZ.gov slash newsletter. Please go and sign up. Um, that comes out every Thursday. Okay, last session or last presentation of the, of the night is revenue development. Wait a minute. We already talked about revenue. Ah, you're going to learn something new. Um, uh, our person that um, uh, is going to give this next section of our class uh, comes to us from the Bluegrass State, correct? Kentucky. Anybody from Kentucky? I spent a week there one night. Um, uh, background in, I'm kidding. I'm just being serious. Uh, background in parks and recreation, resource management, has worked with a lot of nonprofits over the years. Um, he came to us in 2018. Um, and now gets to run the revenue development area for the city of Apache Junction, which you will find out encompasses a lot of different things. So, without further ado, Fox Young. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Good? All right. Uh, my name is Fox Young, and I come from Kentucky. Uh, one of the first things when I came to Arizona that was kind of culture shock were the horses. I'm used to wide open spaces for the horses, 10, you know, 20 acres minimum. And I came out here and I was like, oh my gosh, there's five horses on that little plot of land. And I didn't realize at the time that, you know, there's no real grazing out here. It was because everything there is green, but everything out here is like a tannish brown green. So it was really kind of culture shock when I came out here. It was one of the most striking things when I stepped foot. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so different. But this place is so wonderful. I'm amazed, not just at the beauty of the landscape, even though at it, it, first it looks harsh, it really isn't. It's really beautiful when you get out there and start doing some hiking and moving around, uh, getting out on the trails. And also the community here, and the community in Apache Junction, I'm gonna get into this too a little later, it's just amazing, they're so giving and they're so connected with the community. Uh, back where I was from, you know, we had more cows than people. So, you know, everybody kind of stayed to themselves a little bit. Out here it's in AJ, it's not really that way. Um, but let me get started. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about city grants, and I heard you all uh, had one of the prior presentators also talked about grants, so I'll just kind of skim over that a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about corporate partnerships, and then two of the nonprofits that work closely with the city, which is the Friends of Apache Junction and the Apache Junction Community Development Corporation. And to get right into it, uh, grants, they're just an external uh, source of revenue to address locally defined needs. Uh, I try to keep that nice and simple. If you look online, you're probably going to get three or four paragraphs. Uh, as a starter, but uh, really, you're looking for extra money 
uh, for a project that you might need. It might be something for the police department, it might be something for transportation cabinet, you might need to put in a sidewalk somewhere. Uh, so there could be uh, a lot of different reasons why you might need a grant. Uh, the funding sources for grants uh, generally come from two sectors, the government or the private sector. Uh, government can be federal, state, county, even city uh, from time to time will give out grants. Uh, the private sector, you'll have businesses, uh, larger nonprofits, or even sometimes it'll be a private resource like a family foundation that you can get your funding from. And it's all encompassed under what we call grant management. You have different parts to that. Your first part is going to be research, then you have writing, your administration, and your reconciliation. All right, grant management. That's the overall project management of the grant cycle. And it encompasses a lot of different things. I'm just gonna hit on the four main parts here. Uh, the first one's your research. And this is gonna be gathering the information that you're gonna need for the grant. It'll generally be something like demographics, uh, research on the organization uh, that is going to award the grant. If you don't do your research about the organization when you write a grant, your chances of getting one is very, very slim. And another thing that's often overlooked is you always want to go and see what they've awarded grants in the past for. And you, wanna, you don't want to reinvent the wheel when you're doing this. So when you go to actually write your grant, which is kind of the art of the entire grant process, you want to try and mirror what other people have done in the past. Uh, when I was in Kentucky, sometimes we joked that uh, we reinvented the square because we weren't even smart enough to reinvent the wheel uh, back there. Don't do that. Don't make it harder on yourself than you have to. Uh, just go out, see what other people have done. Uh, they probably, if they've been awarded a grant, have somebody who knows what they're doing. And it was clear, it was concise, and it was point for point what that agency wanted. Then you're awarded a grant. Great, that's awesome, now what? Now comes the harder parts, the administration of the grant. So this is, you're distributed the funds, but there's all these weird stipulations in the grant, and you're gonna have to follow those uh, to the letter, because if you don't, your chances of getting that grant in the future are, or another grant like it in the future are very slim. So before, after you write it and before you get it, you're like, okay, they're gonna give it to us. You have to get with your team and make sure everybody on that team knows that they have to follow these guidelines to the letter. Um, it, mainly, it's how the funds are gonna be spent in the project. You don't want somebody going off script and using funds that, in a way that's not been outlined. Great, project's done, awesome. Reconciliation. Now comes the final part. You're not done, the project's done, but you're not done. Uh, you have to do follow-up reports. Uh, generally these are multi-page, uh, there's a lot of information that goes back into it, and then you have to provide the receipts. This is where if you haven't spent the money correctly or accordingly, then again, your chances of getting the grant in the future are basically nil. If you've misappropriated those funds, you're not getting that grant again. And if it's something like the police department where jobs you know, are literally created because of the grant, if that grant runs out, that job is gone. So you'd never want that to happen. So always be diligent when you're doing the administration and reconciliation of the grants. Any questions on grants? I either did a great job or you all just want to get out of here. So we'll move on. Corporate partnerships. Uh, corporate partnerships give the city extra funds. These are non-budgeted funds because you, you can't expect everything in, in uh, an entire year. Strange things happen. Uh, so these give extra uh, funds for events and programs, but it also helps the community and businesses and organizations and why? Why would anybody want to do a corporate partnership? Uh, is anybody here a business owner? 
pay a few of you? Well, you can probably attest marketing is pretty expensive, especially traditional marketing, print or um, like onla online media, um, TV, trying to do a commercial, you have to have special equipment, you have to have a team dedicated for that. Uh, very, very, very expensive. That's why people went to social media. It's nice, it's cheap, it's easy, but there can be issues with that. Sometimes you post something you don't expect to create controversy that does. There's a lot of businesses, if you pay attention to the news, that are having to walk back what they've said on social media, not meaning any harm, but you know they just didn't take everything into account. And also, if you're doing social media, it's going out to the people that already know about your brand and already know about your products because they're following you already. So with the city, we have basically a dedicated team uh, of professionals that have traversed this realm for a long time and we have a broad range of people who follow. People who follow the Paul's or the Apache Junction, um, what are they now calling it? It's not the Paul's and Falls Care Center. Oh, um, Animal, Control. Animal Control, thank you. Uh, center down there off baseline. Uh, some people will follow just the AJPD, some people will follow uh, Parks and Rec. So it's all encompassing in there. So it's a great way to get your name out. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, some of the corporate partnerships can be done for under $100, some for just a few hundred dollars to get your name out there. So it's pretty inexpensive and there's tiered packages if you wanted to spend 20,000. I would surely take your money and I'll, I'll make you a package for that, but you don't have to. It, it can be relatively cheap uh, and it's prolonged. Um, let's say for example, the 4th of July event. We don't start advertising for the 4th of July event on July 3rd. Uh, we start months in advance. So you're getting your name out there if you are one of the corporate partners for months and it ramps up each time. And it's not just social media. It'll also probably appear in the newspaper. It will probably be on the radio uh, as somebody's doing an interview and sometimes the local news stations will even pick it up. So you get a broad range for just really a few hundred dollars in those cases. And during the events, uh, a lot of times if it's a park and recreation event, there's booths that are set up and you can have a booth there. So you can actually meet clients or potential clients face to face. And a lot of times that face to face interaction is a lot better than just a social media post that people, yep, yep, is they're scrolling by, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're there and in person, it really helps out as well. It's also good publicity. It shows that uh, the partners care about the community and they're supportive of the community. And in these days, that's becoming more and more important. So uh, it's a good way to get out there and get your name known. Any questions on corporate partners? Some of you business owners, I expect to get a call from you soon, hopefully. <laughs> All right, our nonprofits. Uh, Friends of Apache Junction and the Apache Junction Community Development Corporation, we will start with the Friends. Uh, these two organizations, they work very closely with the city, uh, so that's why they're having me speak about them. I'm not a board member on any of these, uh, so more intricate detailed questions, if you have any, I might not be able to answer, and I would refer you to either their website or one of the board directors. Uh, but it, the Friends, they're an all-volunteer board, so nobody on the board is paid. They give back 97% of all their donations back into the community. And yes, <laughs> oh, wow, uh, that is very unheard of. And it's actually higher than that because anything that's left over, once they um, pay for their insurance postage, uh, you know, mailings, things of that nature, the website, that remainder also goes back into the community. So it, it's a really great organization. They fund a lot of the events if you go to pretty much any of the events uh, in Apache Junction, then probably the Friends have supported it in some way or another. Uh, the Animal Control Center uh, down there off Baseline, a lot of money comes in for there, and they're very supportive of that. 
and just to illustrate how giving this community is, uh, it's actually over $95,000 was donated by residents to help support the community. That's not including grants, that's not including other funding as well. So that's a lot of money that's coming in. Um, the Friends provided, 50, it's over 59,000, I think it's like 61,000 um, in total for the events, programs, and improvements. There's a discrepancy there though. Why didn't they give back all 95,000? It's because that amount wasn't requested. But what happens what, if the totals don't match is they keep that money for the next year and then it can be used the following year. So say something weird happens. Let's take a goat that happens to go down and terrorizes uh, the Animal Control Center. I see you laughing, you know this story. <laughs> there, was a, there was a goat that got loose and smashed up a bunch of uh, kennels because kennels aren't made for goats. Uh, well, there are, but not down there. They weren't expecting to take in a goat. And it did, I think, between four and $5,000 worth of damage down there. That obviously can't be budgeted for. Nobody's expecting to have a goat come in and start tearing stuff up. So that was an emergency expenditure. They contacted the friends and was like, oh my gosh, we have all this damage. And the friends was like, yep, here's the money. So any money that was left over from the previous year can go right back in in emergencies. And the other thing is no other fund can use that money. If money comes in for animal control, it stays there. If money comes in for parks and rec, for like their youth services or their seniors, it stays right there in that fund. I think they hold about 33 different funds uh, throughout, um, not just Apache Junction. They also do this for Paclea, Pinal County Law Enforcement Association, the city of Eloy and Florence. All separate funds, so money from Florence stays, that comes in from the residents there stays there, money from Eloy stays there, the Paclea stays with them, and then anything from AJ stays in AJ. So where does the revenue come from? Kind of already touched on this. Uh, a lot of it comes from donations. They also have a fundraiser, uh, which I just got the date for. Uh, it's a golf tournament, and that's May 20th. If any of you are golfers or know somebody who's a golfer, please pass that along. You can go to their website uh, probably next week and find out information about that. Uh, they also get grants. Uh, sometimes Bank of America has been really good. Kroger's, Fry's uh, have supported uh, AJ and the friends a whole lot with uh, some grants. Oh, and their website, uh, friendsofapachejunction.org. Uh, feel free to go there, look around on the website. Uh, a lot of information about the different departments and what they do and uh, how they help. The AJ Community Development Corporation. I'm most familiar with three of their projects, so that's what I'm gonna to be touching on this evening. They do a lot for the community. It's one of the probably more underrated or unheard of um, nonprofits in the area. They do a lot of great work. Uh, the first project, the focal point, uh, it's down uh, right off Apache Trail between Fry's and, oh my God, I'm blanking on the park, um, Flatiron <laughs> Park down there. And the picture's a uh, little off now because I just realized they took out the golden barrel cactuses and replaced it with flowers. I know, somebody told me, it was like, that's been a couple months now. I was like, I don't go down right there often. I come up a different way. Uh, but it's, it's a really neat area if you haven't been down there. They, it's an area where there's commemorative bricks that are sold. And the community uh, come in, there's three sections. There's one for veterans. There's another section for pets or the general public. So if you want to commemorate a loved one or a beloved pet, you can contact the AJCDC. They have a form online. You can actually type out the brick and see it before you order one. Uh, so it's kind of a neat little program they have set up on there. Uh, I think Yvonne, correct me if I'm wrong, $50? 
<laughs> I, would, I, would, I would have to, it, it's, it's something like that. Um, and then the money goes to help support the community. Uh, the next major event, Make a Difference Day. Hopefully some of you have heard about this. It happens the second Saturday in October. Uh, this past year, it was on the 8th, and I think this year, the 14th? Second Saturday, I think is the 14th, whatever that second Saturday is, and it's a day of service. They generally get between 100 to 130 people uh, who come out and do projects around the community. Five? Five projects. Uh, so five different projects. Uh, it can be something like trail work. I know they've done a lot of work up at the Botanical Walk up there at Silly Mountain. Uh, they've been up there a couple years uh, planting native plants up there. They have also helped out with the median. Uh, they did native trees, native plants in there. Uh, Flatiron Park uh, is a lot of work. If you've seen the mural uh, this past year, they helped do some of that mural and some of the trail work back behind in there. And other times if they have like a community member who's in need, they'll go out and help them uh, as well. And then one of my favorites, uh, is the community revitalization. The organization helps out those who are elderly, disabled, on a fixed income, clean up their properties. Uh, if anybody has, you know, an elderly uh, parent or that or neighbor uh, and they can't get out there, they don't have the income, they can't get out and do it themselves, the AJCDC uh, will come in and help them if they meet the criteria. And this is a picture of one of the projects, and it's just kind of amazing the difference between the two. Same, same property. Goes from that, that. They've done a lot of projects. I think last year they did 28 projects, uh, and since 2019, when the project started, they've cleaned up almost, it's just a hair under 100 tons of trash and debris from the community, which is 200,000 pounds. So you're basically looking at a blue whale, the size of a blue whale, which is one of the largest creatures, if not the largest creature on the planet today. So does a lot of good. Um, and just because I remember this, because I'm involved with helping another uh, person out here real quick, Free Dump Week is the sixth. Second week, second week of February. Uh, the only reason that I brought that up is the AJCDC is timing one of their projects uh, for that to help somebody out in the community. They're gonna actually go in with their trailer, help the person load it, and then take it to the dump week. Their website, patchyjunctioncdc.com. Uh, you can just type in uh, Patchy Junction Community Development Corporation, it'll pop right up. Uh, they got a lot of interesting stuff in there, a lot of good information about resources for the community. Uh, have a lot of businesses that also help them out. So great resource if you are interested. They take volunteers as well for the cleanup projects and for Make a Difference Day. So if you're interested in doing that, please go there and check it out. And uh, I was trying to look get up out the... Of here early. I was, trying, I was trying to look up the brick, but it doesn't have a mount on it, on the page. It doesn't have a mount on it? It doesn't. There's, there, there's, a, there's a donation page that they have, and it, you can do 25, 50, on and on. Mm -hmm. But just for the bricks, it doesn't say. Which page are you on, Eric? Okay. You can call it up if you want. That way everybody can see it. Ah, there it is. Fifty dollars. You're right. Good catch. For sure. <laughs> Ooh, you scored one finally. <laughs> Yeah, so here's what the webpage uh, looks like. And what they were talking about was the focal point. Mm -hmm. 
right there. And there it is. And here's all the information about it. Here's kind of some of the pictures of there. And if you wanted to order a brick, yep. that comes up. That was, and that's what I like. There you go. So it types it right out there for you. So you can see exactly what it's going to look like when it gets done. Any questions? Um, with the, I guess I can go look it up, but with the community revitalization, they do it all year long, all helping year. people with cleanup? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that one runs all year long. The Make a Difference Day is just that one day, but the community revitalization goes any time. So how many bricks are available for sale? How many? How many bricks are available? Just judging from what I've seen now, there probably several hundred. Okay, just wanted to buy two or three. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Buy as many as you want. Buy as many as you want. Buy early and buy often, and get them for Christ allow. Christ Christmas gifts for 2025. All right, <laughs> yeah. keep going. How many people knew that there was a revenue development area in a municipality? Hmm. You never know. Nope. You never, never know. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, you all have a great evening. Thanks for allowing me to come out here and speak with you tonight. Al, thank you very much as well. Fox Young, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Fox. His uh, presentation, again, is up here. Um, uh, if you have not gotten the presentations for the rest of the night, please come up. Uh, revenue development economic development, and of course finance and budget. These are all up here. And also the first one that I did. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble here, aren't I? Um, uh, and the first one we did for that first night is also up here, so make sure you have that. Um, if you haven't gotten a binder, I don't know if there's anybody who was not with us the first night um, and is here tonight. If you are, uh, Sandy, you were here. Please come up and get a, uh, a binder. Good. Make sure you have, everybody has a binder because we're going to try to put all of the presentations in the, in the binder. Okay, any other uh, questions before we're all done for the night? Yes, ma'am. In, in, in a funny way, and the question was, you know, what, what does the city get out of the revenue development uh, area? Uh, I think it, it sort of um, helps to address a hole, if you will, that the city a lot of times can't do. Certainly the city is not, unfortunately, in the position to be able to fix everybody's house, um, not able to revitalize every community. Um, uh, it's just not built that way, and, and no municipality, no government's really built that way. So, but, you, but it does improve the quality of life, and it does improve the property value and the, um, the morale, if you will, kind of intangible here uh, of a community. If, you know, things look a little bit nicer, if, you know, things are cleaned up, if, um, uh, you know, people get a little bit of help. And then you also have to remember our demographic and our demographic certainly older, a little lower income. They all need help in many, many ways. We all do. But, you know, those kinds of uh, situations um, uh, they could absolutely use help. So that's another reason why that, I think that has developed in the way and, and evolved in the way into uh, where, where it has. Um, other questions from tonight? Any, and, any um, interesting uh, um, new things that you learned tonight that you're going to take home and go, oh yeah, that's why we don't have a Chick-fil-A in Apache Junction. Um, uh, there's one on Power and Ray. Come on now. Um, we hope that you will, I, I did send a, a reminder on State of the City to everyone tonight, uh, during the day today. Please RSVP, because we're trying to get a number. We will have catering that night, so you can get a little refreshment. Um, uh, and it is a, a really interesting night to learn a little bit about what's going on. I'll give you a little sneak peek. We uh, will be uh, learning a little bit more about our new council members, because of course, as I've mentioned a couple times, we have four new council members who are not seated as, uh, as council a year ago. So we're gonna learn a little bit about them. Um, we're gonna get a little uh, presentation from the police chief. The police chief has a year under his belt. So we'll see how his first year has gone. 
Um, and, uh, and like I said, we have a nice little refreshment that we get to share in uh, to start, and it's always, a, it's always an interesting night um, uh, to uh, learn a little bit more about the city and, and visit with some of your, some of your um, uh, neighbors. Eric. No, no, you're just um, uh, if you're, I'll, I'll see you that night, so I'll, I'll say hello. But if you can RSVP, please do. If you know you're going to be able to make it, please do. Like I said, just to help our, our count. George. Um, uh, I, I like to think of it as black tie. <laughs> bolo tie, I think bolo tie would work. Um, it is not um, uh, um, formal in any way, shape, or form. Come as you are. Um, but, I used to tell this uh, to folks when you work in, in government, you'd think, oh, you have to wear you know, a suit and tie every day. Well, Apache Junction is not exactly a suit, suit and tie you know, community. It really isn't. So we, for the most part, wear button-down shirts and you know, nice blouses and things like that, but not anything really that formal. When we're in the council meetings, yeah, we might be you know, a little bit more uh, formal than others. Um, uh, when I was growing up in Tucson, they used to wear Mexican uh, wedding shirts, the Guayaveta shirts, which are those, you know, embroidered shirts, and that was considered formal. So you never know what you are. You never, never know. But no, no, uh, no dress code by, by any means. I would appreciate if you wore, like, closed-toed shoes. Okay, you can wear sandals. Anyway, um, so hopefully we'll see you next week. That is uh, 6.30 uh, at the high school. The high school is at uh, Ironwood and Southern in the Performing Arts Center, the auditorium on campus. Uh, and like I said, I hope you'll, uh, you'll join us. We'll open the gates at uh, 6 o'clock so you can eat a little something, and then the program starts at 6.30. Probably won't go more than an hour. Uh, we'll be back here two weeks from now, um, uh, another set of, uh, of, of uh, presentations that hopefully you will be, par you will be uh, um, uh, joining us for. If you cannot, remember, we do send out a link to the live stream right before class starts. So you can still uh, watch from home if you uh, need to, or if you need to watch or you miss something, um, you know, you uh, didn't quite, you know, catch something that Patrick said who was going 150 miles a minute, um, you can go back and watch. So uh, you, you will see that in your email. We sent out, I sent out that link right before class started. You can go back to that and watch at your own leisure. With that said, we hope to see you next week. If not, we'll see you back here in two weeks. Everybody, as always, please drive home safely.